This video will help familiarize you with the MX Pro Service Tool software, PCNet 015. When the software is opened, you are presented with a simple user interface with three main areas. The ribbon, the toolbar along the top, allows control and manipulation of device selections, filters, categories, and communications, which we will focus on to start with. The sub view will list the nodes as you download them. This will populate with a numerical list of each individual node that you have extracted the service information from on your installation. Whether that be one panel or 200 panels, they will be populated in numerical order in the nodes column on the left hand side. The main window is then broken up into three sub areas which will allow us to see our device overview, the event logs of the system and device history. We will come back to that in just a moment. First, we need to extract the information from our control panel. We can do so through either of the connection medium that we offer with the advanced protocol equipment, either through an RS-232 port with suitable lead and adapter, or by a direct USB. My system is set up to COM port 1, however your system may differ in the COM port number assigned. Please ensure that you have the correct COM port selected. Once you have done that, you simply click on the download button and it will extract the information from the control node to which you are connected. Depending on the level of data and the service history that the system has um, generated over the period of its operational lifespan, this may take some time to download. To that effect, I have prepared an example file so that I can load that directly in and avoid any delay while opening the information. The progress bar in the lower right hand corner of the screen just gives indication of how far through the opening of the file or the download the service tool software is. Once completed, i.e. a download or in this case opening a file, you are presented with a lot more information. It has populated the node list from my demonstration file. It has populated the device types. You can filter this information by node, zone, device type, by loop, or simply select all devices. You can assign filters, which we will come back to in just a second and explain what the filters are and how they do what they do. Categories allows you to assign colored categories for easy viewing at a glance of devices that may be about to fail or have gone into fire alarm and so on. Uh, the device view when opened up gives you a lot of information relating to the current control panel selection. So we are on node one. Uh, so it tells me node one is responsible for zone 874, loop one, address one, no sub address. Um, if the device has been given descriptor or named via the configuration, that will appear under the description column. The device status references the device in fire, fault, normal operation, is it missing, is it dirty, is it calibration failure, that would all be listed there. The value, in this example, we are using Hachiki devices which use a percentage of parts per million contamination to reflect the status of the devices. 0% is good, i.e. there is no contamination in the chamber. As we look down the list, we can see a couple of devices that stand out as being slightly of concern. 1.2% and 1.1%, 1.1% again further down. Hachiki devices will enter a pre-alarm condition if that value reaches 2.5%. These devices may at some point go into a pre-alarm as this value continues to rise. They may be flagged up through a category. So you could assign a custom category with a red color so that you know at a glance that that device warrants attention. The drift value, if the device supports what's known as drift compensation and detail of drift compensation is available from the device manufacturers directly, it's the device's way of basically saying that it has become contaminated through environmental factors over a period of time and allows the panel to operate within those slightly expanded constraints. The device status over on the right hand side, enabled or disabled, so a green tick would indicate that the device is enabled, a red cross would say that it was disabled. That's basically the device overview. You can scroll down the list. As you can see here, I've currently only got smoke detectors selected. 
if I wanted to change the device type, I can revisit the selection and go to call points. Or if I wanted to, I can go to the status of beacons. It's just a shortcut there so you can see different device types at a glance. As I mentioned earlier, you can filter by node, by zone, by device type. So if you wanted to see everything on a node, you can click on a node and it will give you everything, including but not limited to panel hardware, loops one, two, three, four. And then you have panel hardware. So that even covers things like your panel sounder circuits, your earth monitor, your charger, your auxiliary supply, and so on. Moving on to the event logs. So the event log options are exactly as you would expect them to be if you were using the MX Pro local terminal software, PCNet004. This gives a chronological summary of everything that has occurred on the fire alarm system from the day it was turned on to right now. The Pro 4 series panels don't feature the event logs within the service tool software. It is exclusive to the MX Pro 5s. There are 5,000 events available and they are chronological, so they are in date and time order. Once it reaches the limit of 5,000 events, any new event simply bumps off the oldest event from the bottom of the list. So at any one time, the maximum amount of events you will have in the log will be 5,000. They can be extracted through the service tool software and reviewed just via scrolling through the listings. The history data allows you to see when a device was actually added to a system. So in this example, node one, loop one, address one, was added on the 4th of January, 2017 at 1948. The last activation, activation is a fire alarm, a real fire scenario. It may be a walk test, but in real fire, rather than in the single one man walk test mode. The date of the activation was the 18th of February, 2018 at 1401. The last test column corresponds to the one man walk test. So I can see if I scroll down the column here, that a significant, if not all devices have not been tested in a fire test scenario. However, they have been tested in fire alarm. So we know that the system does work. It also covers the last time the devices were disabled and the last time the devices were enabled, just so you can see the history of when a device was isolated. So that finishes the summary of the device, the logs and the history. The second function of the service tool is a site simulation feature. This allows you to connect to a Pro 5 panel on site or in your office, which is in level three in commissioning. Open up a configuration file from the actual site or one that you want to test and validate. And it will then allow you to connect to the control panel and use the service tool, the PC itself, as a virtual network. So your PC pretends that it is the system and you can actually activate a device on the PC and see how the panel you are connected to will react, i.e. when you activate a specific call point, does the door relay open? If you have a fault from a certain device, does something happen on the system? Do you get a warning beacon notifying? You can actually prove that through the simulation without affecting the rest of a live customer network. That can be done, like I say, on site, or it can be done in your office with a, a spare demonstration panel just to allow you to see before you attend site if the system is actually going to operate the way that you have programmed it to and are expecting it to. Thank you for taking the time to watch this demonstration video by Dave Burton of Advanced Technical Support.